Hi there. Welcome to my 2020 Tesla Model 3. We are going to test the autopilot and Volkswagen Travel Assist. This is the Tesla autopilot. All right, so here we are on the interstate. In order to activate autopilot, just do two clicks down on the stop. Get a chime that it's indicating up here on the screen with the blue uh, steering wheel. The thing about autopilot that's important to note is a couple of things. First and foremost, you have to keep uh, basically torque or pressure on the wheel as opposed to Volkswagen Travel Assist where you can just touch it. You actually have to put some pressure on the wheel itself in order for it to recognize that you're there. In order to control the speed, uh, it's this rollerball here. Uh, you can set it to be offset to the speed limit or the speed limit. So if there's a speed limit change, it will uh, affect the speed of the car and autopilot. Uh, the travel, the distance uh, that you, how close you want to be to the car uh, in front of you is adjusted here. Now, there's been several updates, uh, but the latest Way, you can only go down to two. When I first got the car, you could go to one. Well, Tesla decided they were going to go to vision only system. My car has radar, but still yet, I can only go to two. So it's between two and seven. So I usually keep it on either two or three, personally. Um, now, one of the big disadvantages is I see it with travel assist you know, autopilot versus travel assist. In order to change lanes in autopilot, you have to basically disconnect from autopilot. So I hit the indicator, you hear the beep, and then now basically adaptive cruise control is what we're on at this point. So uh, in order to get back into autopilot, you have to do that now. Travel assist is a major plus on this because you, while you have to have three lanes to be able to change lanes, um, if you just even if you don't have three lanes, you could just indicate and then it will just sort of suspend travel assist. When you get back in your lane, it comes back on. You know, I know that these are all first world problems, but that's one of the differences. So, autopilot is really good. One of the things that it does very well um, is it will slow down. Like if you get into a curvier portion of the road, it will slow down for you. Um, you can use it on basically any road. Uh, I'm, I think there has to be a line, although I'm not even sure about that. I'm pretty sure there has to be lines, but it does not have to be interstate. Whereas Travel Assist really likes to be uh, on the, the interstate for more limited access roads that I can tell. I will say, um, since my ownership, I have uh, over 50,000 miles of this car. I got it in 2019. Uh, Autopilot has definitely gotten better. Um, you do still have phantom braking that's where you, you the car sees something nothing's really there there's really no problem but it jams on the brakes that does happen it's very infrequent now so that's been my my experience it used to be more frequent Volkswagen never has that problem so um, I love autopilot I use it all the time and um, this is the autopilot that's the, that comes with every Tesla so I have it upgraded to full self-driving I have it updated to uh, enhance autopilot. This is just the base autopilot and it works very well. Now let's take a look at the Volkswagen ID4 and Travel Assist. It's important to remember that Travel Assist comes standard on all ID4s. One of the best features I think of the Volkswagen ID4 is Travel Assist. So I thought I would take this opportunity to show you uh, how it works here on the interstate. So first step Turn the system on, which is this button right here. And then press uh, this button to choose Travel Assist. Travel Assist selected, then press Set. And you see the speed there, it says it's 69. And then the distance can be controlled here. So you can see that it's slowing down because that car ahead of me is uh, closer than it wants to be. You can control that here that's more distance and this is less. Now one of the coolest features 
if it'll if I get an availability here in traffic I'll show you if you can actually change lanes okay so it's clear on the left I'm waiting okay so now I'm waiting for this to turn white okay indicate with the turn signal to go to the left and one of the things that took me a while to figure out is just keep holding on to the wheel you have to touch the wheel it's touch sensitive it's not torque like the um, uh, Tesla autopilot is and I think for something for that reason alone it's much superior let's go on up to 70 and you can see it's taking these turns just fine uh, you do have to keep your hand on the wheel but again you don't have to keep pulling on it uh, like in a Tesla just touching it is fine and, and it does do um, the lane changes also if you were in a particular rough spot of pavement you can actually uh, turn move over and it will then set itself to be on the left part of the lane or the right part of the lane so here I'm going to the left just there we go so um, I think that's a pretty neat feature and then of course if you need to go back to the middle you can just go back to the middle and do that so again one of the more interesting features that one of the we've used this quite a bit in our uh, ID4 highly recommend it um, better at least as good if not better than autopilot I will say this I've never once not once had phantom braking in 12,000 miles of this uh, ID4 it's also worth noting here that if for some reason travel assist kicks you out there's no audible tone the, to make you aware of that fact so you have to pay very close attention uh, because it can't just kick out uh, without being very obvious that it's done so but two thumbs up uh, we really enjoy uh, travel assist and would recommend it